All right, here we are again. We're going to a card show in Charlotte. It's technically South Carolina, Fort Mills, and we're going there. We're gonna meet a friend. So hopefully some cool things to show you. Um, and I'll be there in an hour and, oh God, 45 minutes. See you all there.
Okay, so this is the second non-sport card show. So the first one was a sports card show in its entirety. And I went because a very good friend of ours, a very special collector, um, invited me to go. He was about uh, almost two hours away at this card show. I was like, ah, I'll just come by and meet you, have a great talk. So those are the other pair of hands you see helping me look through Marvel cards. Um, it was really fun, had a great time. And it was cool to find those cards that we found, which were um, the Marvel Ages inserts, the Decade ones, which I really like, really love in person. I like to get a full set of that, but currently those cards are on EPAC. The achievement hasn't been collected yet, and some of these cards are, unfortunately, I think, priced at you know premier price level. Not that I don't, I don't know if they're going to hold price or what, but I'm not willing to spend that money on them currently. So I'm trying to do it in the cheapest way possible. Um, I don't know how else to do it. So I'm trying to do it the cheapest way possible. I bought a box for 130 I believe on EPAC, I believe it's 130 on EPAC, to try to turn that box into a full decade set. Uh, I'm finding it a little difficult right now, but I'm sure once they're all claimed and Black Diamond comes out, I'll be able to pick them up on EPAC, have a full set, see if I want to send it home, see if I'm still excited about it in a couple of months. This is why I hate collecting outside of my interest, my specific already set predetermined interest of Silver Surfer and a few other uh, bigger Marvel cards and non-sport cards. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Black Diamond on EPAC is going to be interesting. I wonder if they'll have a signer that they didn't release physically. That would be pretty crazy, and I think the price point on that will be intense. If that is something that happens, and it will sell out, but I just don't know. Uh, the big news, too, is X-Men Metal. I'm going to see if I can get some boxes for us. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm thinking about rainbowing a X-Men character out of there, similar to how I did Spot for Flare Ultra Spider-Man. Um, if you don't know about that, I can post a video or a link or whatever the little thingy thing they do. Um, but I'm thinking about doing it. I'm pretty excited. I don't know what insert it's gonna be, if it's a PMG, if it's a furnace, if it's the planet metal. I just don't know yet. I do think if the X-Men Metal becomes a metal series and there's Avengers Metal and like Spider-Man Metal or whatever the case may be, I feel like that will be really interesting what happens there. It'd be really interesting to see what they do with inserts and if inserts become um, standardized for certain sets. Uh, that I think needs to happen and hopefully it is. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts. I'm now going to the Salisbury non-sport card show. And this is me talking a little bit just to you. A little uh, MTV confessional type of thing. And basically what my plans are is it's a non-sports card show. So it's one of the first ones I've seen in the title where it says non-sports. They exist. This is the first one I'm going to that says non-sports. So hopefully some of my uh, brethren and sister and sister -in? Yes, sister, is that how you say it? I don't know. Anyway, some of my own will be there, and I'll be able to um, get some stuff. I don't know what I'm going for. I like to pick up a cool non-sport auto, like something I've been looking at on eBay that I can see in person. That might be kind of nice. Or some graded Marvel cards, or maybe in a box. I might pick up a box of something. It just depends on the price, and you know, it depends what I want to do. Maybe I'll pick up a box of Black Diamond. I don't know if I'll pick up a box of Ages. Okay, so I can also do a little update, um, because obviously for these card shows, and so everyone knows, there's not a lot of non-sport. It's usually all sport. So there's not a lot to share or film. So that's why these videos have been very short on card show and more on me. 
which is not my preferable thing to do when showing you card shows, but it's basically all I got. Um, so what am I thinking? What are some thoughts that I've been talking to other people about? What am I looking at with Marvel cards? So one small subject I want to talk about, just to catch you up, is what's been happening with Marvel cards and misinformation. Uh, currently there was a video from uh, Millie Pops, I think it is, I'm not sure. And I think that's how you pronounce it. Very nice, huge sports figures in the community. Um, here's a, a, a still from their video. And it was a cool video, it was on Marvel cards. So I was really, really excited to see it because it's Marvel cards. And I was like, oh, finally, it's gonna get some spotlight on it. We're gonna see some information, things I don't know, blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, there was something that happened in the video that made me really sad for those people, uh, for those owners, was this card that they said was a case ex exclusive card signed by Jusco. This is not true. Uh, I don't think they know that. I don't think they're trying to scam anybody at all. This is basically just one example of how there's so much misinformation on Marvel cards out there in terms of what is rarity, what is important, what important, what is, you know, things people are looking for, what are some of the grails, some of the hits. And while there are pack inserted autos, there's no pack inserted autos for MM92, for MM93, 94, 95, and 96. And I mean like autograph, autograph, not gold sig variant. So uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So all the Marvel Masterpieces don't have pack-pulled autos. Uh, at least the ones all the way to 96. Um, after that, yeah, of course, you know, you get some more of the more modern type of inserts and stuff like that. Uh, really, back in, uh, pack-inserted autos didn't start until, wow, I might be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure it's 1991 Marvel Universe with the special tin that weighed different and had the hologram of Spider-Man with Stanley's signature on the back. And then really the that might the one that might be before Marvel Universe or around the same time was the X-Men series one Jim Lee inserted autos. I believe that might be some of the first autos that were inserted into packs. Nothing from the 1996 nothing from comic images. Comic images were really just cards that were Draw, pre drawings that were re stenciled and colored, um, and then those were printed on there, or you know, uh, using of works of specific art. Uh, Jim Lee and author Adams is another one. Those sets were, you know, basic sets of just taking a popular artist at the time, getting their work and putting their work on cards to make artists more marketable to the public and more memorable and we're doing that with cards. Because currently, now, everybody knows who these superheroes are, so cards are not so much about informing us of these superheroes, unless they're off the beaten path superheroes, which is really cool, like for Marvel Annual, and uh, some other uh, sets as well. But really, what the cards should be doing is letting you know who's the artists, right? Who's the writers? Who's the people, the inkers, right? Or the pencilers? That kind of stuff needs to start happening in Marvel, and people need to be more informed of that in order to start making some real solid decisions on what are some of the biggest grail cards in Marvel. And let's be honest, the truth is everyone wants to identify the grail card because they're looking for the investment angle. They're looking for, okay, what is the thing to, have, to be the GOAT, right? The greatest of all time crap. You know, people want to get uh, Charizard, first edition Shadowless base, and they want to put that right next to the Flair, uh, Flair Michael Jordan card, right? And now they want the Marvel one, or they want the Star Wars one. Problem is, well, there's two problems, really, and this all connects to the misinformation, or the lack of information on the Marvel cards. So, I mean, one, they didn't collect it, right? I mean, you're not gonna have information on stuff unless you collected this stuff and you're not gonna know. But here's the issue. 
a lot of people want to keep the information quiet. They want to hold it to themselves. They don't want to share it. And I think, and I don't know everything at all, but I think the problem with that is that everyone who does have this stuff now, when they go to sell it, they're only selling it to like five or six people. They're not selling it to the general public. They're selling it to the other five or six or 10 or 12 collectors who are into this stuff. And that makes it so insular that there's no growth. There's no growth in numbers. There's no growth in popularity. There's no growth in the sets itself. People don't take an interest. People don't flock to the hobby. You know, everybody talks about the 90s, uh, 90s cards and how when they were kids and they bought into it because it was cheap and Marvel's too expensive now. I don't think it's because Marvel's too expensive, which it is expensive, obviously. It's catering to all of us, which is more along my point. But I think it's more because we don't let anybody in. And that's where this misinformation comes from. All the people who are in the know, know and keep it quiet because they don't want to not be able to obtain these cards. I think people need to obtain these cards now, get them while they can, let people know what's going on, and clue people in because there's a real risk of the hobby becoming even more insular and become really only for a handful of people on a leaky boat. I always think of Mortal Kombat when I think of that line. This is what you get for letting me just talk unscripted. This is what happens. But back to misinformation. There's no inserted cards on the 92 Marvel Masterpieces. Joe Jusco signed a lot of cards, a lot of cards at cons and stuff like that. Even Dynamic Forces, uh, which was back in the day, if that doesn't um, give you a little bit of a uh, flashback, did a 5,000 card signed Jusco series, and he numbered them out of 5,000. I don't know what that breaks down to because I think it's a 100 card set, I believe. I think that includes inserts, I'm not sure. And each card was signed by Jusco however many times that made up 5,000 cards. A lot of people, what they try to do is they can make sets of those signatures, which is why they're expensive. Uh, sometimes they're expensive as people are trying to complete their set, or people are trying to hoard them and have all the signatures so they can control the market. So much of this stuff is hard to find, not because... <laughs> it's not so much that it's hard to find because it's so extremely rare, which it is, but mostly it's a couple of factors. One, no one took care of it. Two, people thought Marvel cards were a joke, so a lot of people lost those cards. And three, the people who do have them want to keep them. They don't want to get rid of them. They hoard them. They are happy to have them. Hoard might be a strong word. It's more along the lines of like, that is part of their collection goals want to go ahead and say that but yeah you know I, I think hopefully this channel can inform people of stuff I'll do a couple of different videos and start getting on top of this a little bit more start doing pack inserted videos like what are some of the biggest pack inserted uh, misconceptions and or like what are some different pack inserted cards that are important like sketch cards autographs archive cuts I mean, the next big thing I want to talk about, too, is breakthrough um, issues. Uh, breakthrough issues, or I think that's the insert name. It's Marvel Beginnings is the set. And basically, they came out with an insert set card, uh, insert card that was Breakthrough Comics or something. And the card features a cover of a classic comic book. Now, that's a cool insert and all, and everything's great. But what's even more fantastic is that not only is the issue there on the cover, but there's a variant with the actual on-card signature of the creators of that comic book. Yeah. So for instance, I have Silver Surfer number one, and there's a, 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 an insert that has Stan Lee's signature on it. It has a sticker on the back. It also comes with the COA. It's pack inserted. There's another one with Joe Sinod. Sticker on the back, car, separate card COA, pack inserted. They exist for a lot of issues. The Hulk and Wolverine, uh, the Incredible Hulk with the first cover appearance of Wolverine, or whatever it is. Uh, Iron Man, Spider-Man, uh, X-Men, 
right? Even has the X-Men Fatal Attractions with the hologram in there and it has all three of the signatures. It's sickening. Um, it's very, very cool. But to sum it up, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Please follow me on Instagram and, and subscribe to this channel if, you, if you'd like. Uh, you know, it, it would help me to see that these videos are reaching all of you and um, something you like to watch. So the more subscribers I have and all that kind of stuff helps me, me. I mean, I, you know, I don't think this channel will ever be popular, but I do like, I do need to know that this is helping everyone out there so I can keep doing these. Because they, they, are, they are some work. So let me know what you're enjoying, questions you have. Please DM me with any questions you may have. I, you know, the best way to check on prices, and that might be my next video, is how to price your Marvel cards. If that's something you want, let me know down below. Like, subscribe. Follow me on my Instagram and, and subscribe here. And I hope you have a wonderful day.